Hello, hello, hello. Hope everyone is well. I'm going to see if I can cue up some music before we get started. Have something light playing in the background. So, if you saw my post, um, I've just been super inspired today to get on and talk about the struggle um, that comes sometimes when we are trying to learn how to enforce our personal boundaries. Um, that has been a huge struggle for me for the majority of my life and I'm really just now kind of getting free from it. Um, let's see if I can find some nice music. Um, so if you are catching the live, I'm so grateful that you are here. Um, if you are catching the replay, let me know that you caught the replay, okay? I'm going to look up some relaxing, let's do spa music. How does that sound? I think that sounds pretty flipping awesome, so we're going to go with that. And you guys can let me know. Um, if it sounds too loud or if it's not loud enough, um, you can kind of help me with that. How does that sound? Can you all hear that? I see two people, but like, I have no idea who's on here. So <laughs> feel free to say hi. And if I don't get to your comments, um, during this live, I'll definitely respond whenever it finishes, um, or when you, um, catch the replay. So, yeah. But, with that said, it is about 8.17, and we are gearing up for Memorial Day weekend. So, who here has plans for Memorial Day weekend? Anybody got anything good going? probably just gonna work here. Hustle, hustle, and hustle some more. Ain't that the way the cheer went? <laughs> Hello to everyone who's hopping on. Can't really see faces yet of who all's here, but I'm glad you're here. Let me know how this sounds in the background. Um, I want to make sure that it's not overpowering, but I also want to make sure that it is um, audible. So if you hop on, feel free to say hello so that way I can see your face um, and let me know how your day has been. Let me know how your week has been. I'm really, really wanting to, um, I've been posting like for a while about wanting to build meaningful community. That is so important to me and <clears throat> I feel like we're heading into a time where having our tribe, not that it's not ever been, you know, like not important, but I feel like we're about to go into a time when it's more important than ever before. Hey, Faith. Okay. I'm finally starting to see some names pop up. Like I could see people joining, but I have no idea. Faith, I hope you are well. Hey, Gina. Yay! So glad to see you all here. Uh, but yeah, building meaningful community is super important to me. Um, and just to be like perfectly honest and transparent, um, before the pandemic, like I'm a natural introvert. I am a classic stereotypical introvert. I am the type of person I can be alone for like a year and it just doesn't bother me. I don't know why I'm like that. I, I kind of grew up in an introverted household. So I'm just like, it's a very rare occasion, thankfully, that um, I get stressed out or distraught from not um, interacting or having community around me, you know. But um, when, the, when the pandemic happened and community was no longer an option, uh, and I had no idea when it was going to be an option again. 
that really got to me and I felt super guilty for like declining every inv invitation I'd ever gotten for like baby showers or birthday parties or you know stuff like that um, I have always been like my work ethic has always been just hustle you know like grinding my face off and because of that I have missed out on a lot of important things um, with a lot of important people in my life and I regret it and so that is one huge shift that came for me uh, from the pandemic Hey Zaid, hey Najat, oh I'm so glad to see your faces here, yay, I feel like you all are my tribe, my community, <laughs> hey Sherry Jo, so thankful you all are on here, so yeah, once that happened, hey guys, let me know how this background music sounds, if it's overpowering or just right, um, I want something to kind of help with the atmosphere, you know, make it feel good as we're gathering here um, but yeah what I was saying was like I became very intentional about joining myself with others um, once I knew that I would have uh, the ability to go back out and socialize you know once the pandemic had begun to ebb or what have you and so I've I've stayed that course it's almost like a New Year's resolution of sorts that I actually kept and in that I have found so much magic in connecting with people so anybody else resonate with that can anybody else identify with that if so drop in the comments and let us know um, but yeah I'll get started here in just a minute and go over some of the posts that I made on Facebook today and kind of let you know what space I was coming from uh, when I did those posts. Um, also, I think that if I'm seeing this correctly, Facebook has enabled me to have stars and so I am very much relying on that sort of stream um, to be um, a blessing I guess you could say to my life so if for some reason you feel super inspired by this live by this connection um, then please give stars if you feel called to do so okay and I think you can do that even like once it's just replay um, I'm working really really hard um, to bring my creativity to the forefront and stop hiding it and I know that many of you, that's kind of a thing for many of you as well, okay? So, yeah, we don't need to be hiding our creativity because it can literally be our lifeline. So, yeah. All right, so I will go ahead and get started on uh, my posts from today. And this inspiration came from a video that I was watching from Sadhguru. He's like one of my favorite wisdom teachers and has been for a little while. And um, after I watched his video, I really got to thinking about personal boundaries, personal power, and how that is affected, how those things are affected by the way people perceive us okay and so I got to thinking like depending on how someone sees you how they perceive you it informs them of how they will treat you of what their expectations will be of you okay and so I did this quote after I listened to him and I said, of course, I don't want to be looked down on, but I also don't want to be looked up to. I only want to be seen as I am and accepted for that. Of course, I don't want to be looked down on, but I also don't want to be looked up to. I only want to be seen as I am and accepted for that. And so when I was thinking about that, 
I thought about how multifaceted our humanity is, okay? Have you ever had the experience where maybe you have a large group of friends or a large family and with each person you connect different parts of your personality with that person? Um, so it's almost like maybe with one person you're like this joker, right? And you're hilarious and you're just, you know, that free flowing, you know, kind of a clown that everybody loves and laughs with. But maybe to like a different family member or a different friend, you're like the real serious. I'm kind of almost talking about myself here, but <laughs> I'm referring, this is my, I am my point of reference. But, um, but maybe with like another friend or another family member, you know, you're in more of an intellectual, serious flow, okay? And then maybe a group of you goes out and the people who are used to you being serious and intellectual see you being a clown are like, whoa, I didn't know you were like that. And, you know, and then vice versa. So you see what I'm saying? We're like, we're very multifaceted. Um, and so I'm going to try to do this as streamlined as possible. We're very multifaceted in our personalities and in who we are, okay? And we are perceived differently from every single person in our lives, whether that's our children, whether that's our parents, whether that's our um, friends or our coworkers or our colleagues. Um, and so because of this multifaceted aspect of who we are and because certain people don't see certain sides of you um, in typical interactions, have you ever felt this pressure to constantly have to explain yourself? You know what I'm getting at? Like, like for instance, I'm just going to say like the past two weeks for me, I have been working just daylight till dark. I mean, I have been, and that's not really unusual for me, but I'm growing my tribe. I'm growing my circle of friends. I'm getting back out into the world and I'm expanding. And so, um, my communication is not always as consistent because I'm literally like today, I literally took a break from work to work because <laughs> I'm working on so many different things. Um, but sometimes, like, the people in our lives who are super important to us can feel like they're lost in the shuffle of our business, of our busyness, right? And so, then it comes to this place where, you know, they want to understand why it's like that, but then you also kind of feel like your boundaries are being um, pressed on because you're distracted, right? You're just trying to work. You're just trying to survive. You're just trying to hustle. You're not doing anything like malignant. You're just trying to live. And so for years, as someone who is just like, I have been an obligate people pleaser, right? The majority of my life. And I have spent many years and way too much energy feeling this constant need to explain myself and because of that and inherent with that you're going to feel an, a drain on your energy and when you feel situations or people that drain that where your energy gets drained then you tend to avoid those interactions right and uh, then both of you miss out on quality interaction. Um, so I've really been trying to kind of tiptoe between making sure that I'm consistently um, trying to be as in the loop with the people in my life as I can, um, but also not shift into this mindset where I feel like I'm going to panic if I don't explain to every single person my every single minute and account for every single minute that I was not like responding or reaching out in the way that they expected. Okay. So <laughs> I have a poll in this live. 
hopefully like now that I've created it I can't even see it but hopefully you will see this poll and I want you to take your time look at this poll and if any of these things resonate with you or you want to answer these let me know because it's going to help me um, shape the writing workshops that I have coming up and it's going to help me shape the life coaching sessions that I do and so not only will it kind of you know give me insight into the collective that I'm a part of um, but it will also kind of hone me to be a better mentor a better coach a better teacher a better um, leader. So if you see that poll, feel free to check it out. Also, my stars are enabled. So if you feel called to support me with stars, that would mean more to me than I could adequately convey. And I'm a writer. I'm a poet. So if that tells you anything, that lets you know how grateful I would be for your support. Okay, so going back to that statement that I made on my social media, of course I don't want to be looked down on, but I also don't want to be looked up to. I only want to be seen as I am and accepted for that. And so I started thinking about how when you are thinking in the mindset of looking up to someone or you're feeling the mindset or, ex or have experienced even the mindset of other people looking down right that is all perspective that is all positional perspective let me make sure I've got my do not disturb turned on here so that way I don't have a bunch of notifications and calls going off during this okay we're good um, and then I that's what led me to the whole multifaceted humanity thought which that's you know, that's not a foreign concept to me. I've thought about that for years. But I just thought, you know, really, all perspective that people have of us is absolutely dependent upon their position about you, okay? And so, even if it's not like looking up or looking down on someone, you know, it, they're still, everyone has a position about you, okay? Okay? And that's basically what I'm getting at, is all perspective, even the perspective that you have, the perspective that I have of the people in my life or the people, you know, in my community or celebrities, whatever, um, it is positional, right? And, and it's based on what my, um, kind of like where I'm at more so than where that person or who that person actually is, right? I have, um, in some groups that I'm in, not like any, um, when I say groups, I'm talking like big impersonal groups, you know, like maybe 90 Day Fiance kind of stuff, just fun groups. Um, I often talk about how in the age of social media, and especially with how heated politics have been over the past several years, we have gotten so bad about taking a snapshot of someone from maybe a Twitter post or a Facebook post or an Instagram post. You know, we'll see a photo or we'll see a quote, right? Or we'll see maybe them maybe someone's smiling at a family gathering and we take that snapshot that instance of someone's life and we allow that one snapshot to paint an entire picture and summary of who we believe that person to be and what we believe that person to be experiencing okay and I feel like that is another reason why um, there is such an epidemic of people experiencing, especially like with our younger folks, our, our kids, our teens, there's such an epidemic of, you know, depression and suicide and low self-esteem and, um, you know, eating disorders have even just 
seem to have exploded and all kinds of like mental health issues and it is because of these these snapshot summaries right that we're making of people um, we might see someone and think wow you know they're living their best lives look they're on vacation look they're with their hot significant other uh, they must be super rich and all this kind of stuff um, just know and beware be self-aware I should say and don't allow yourself to fall into that trap um, I actually posted yesterday on my, I think it was yesterday, or maybe the day before yesterday, I posted a picture, I'm scrolling through my um, profile now to see if I can find it, oh, I said three days ago, I said yesterday or the day before, that shows, <laughs> remember how I said I've been like, like, grind until my face falls off. I've been working so much like three days has literally turned into about a 24-hour stretch for me. So I posted um, a, t a memory from two years ago with one of uh, my friends, Bates Reed. If you know Bates, um, you are blessed. Okay, Bates Reed is one of the most loving beings I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. Um, I posted a memory where I had gone over to the Chi Life Center in Red Bank and Bates had lots of buckets of dirt and we were clearing the lot, we were planting flowers, we were, you know, selling vegetables and I just, it was a time where I could get my hands in the earth. Um, and in this picture, you'll see it if you go to my profile. Bates is behind me, I've got my sunglasses on, it's a, it was a gorgeous day that day. And I've got this big, bright smile on my face. And if you look at that and you do a snapshot summary of me by just that one single picture, um, you might think, wow, she just looks so fulfilled and so happy. And, you know, I mean, even looking at myself, I think that. Like, looking at my own smile, I would definitely be like, yeah, I look so happy. But... What people do not know is that was one of the darkest periods of my life when I took that picture. Um, I was um, I was kind of struggling with like suicidal thoughts even during that time. So, um, and no one knew that. Bates didn't know that. I know if Bates had have known that, he would have you know, pulled me to the side and loved on me and encouraged me. Um, but I just got super hyper-focused on the soil that day. And I just focused on the creatures that were in the dirt and thinking like, you know, I'm planting these seeds. Is this a metaphor for the possibility of a life to come for me? Like, will I break through the darkness of the soil and live again? Will I break through and will my roots run deep and um, will I experience the sun again? You know, that's kind of what I was thinking when I was playing, planting in the dirt that day. Um, so, yeah, that's where I was at on that. But we're just so multifaceted. And so, what I was thinking about all day today was like, you know, I just feel like sometimes we need to feel or have the permission to just be ourselves. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Um, because I think we get so caught up in being who others need us to be that a lot of guilt forms around that um, that that kind of a space, and when you're in that kind of a space, year after year after year, uh, maybe you spend the entirety of your 20s and your 30s and your 40s. I'm 44. There, um, you know, it becomes a part of who you are, and at that point, at that point, you are doing a disservice to your own heart. You're doing a disservice 
to your soul. You are essentially aligning with making your life nothing but a contrast. Does that make any sense? Um, you're essentially saying, okay, um, I don't want my life to be absolutely fulfilling. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, that's, that's kind of what it, that's kind of what it boils down to. So, um, I had that realization myself and I was like, you know, I really need to kind of work on this personality flaw about myself. Um, and just work on getting free from it. And so, <clears throat> um, I was going to read you something that I wrote. I don't know if I'll read all of it. Maybe I'll read a little bit of it. I don't know. But anyway, I'm so glad to see you all on here. It looks like a lot of you have joined, I think. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. If you want to give stars, you feel called to give stars and support me, I would appreciate that so, so much. <clears throat> I'm gearing up to do a writing workshop and do some um, co-work sessions for my fellow writers, my writing community. Um, several of you have expressed interest in that. Some of you expressed interest in life coaching sessions as well, and I do still offer those. We can do like monthly package deals. We can do like single one-off sessions, you know, just whatever works for you. Um, but yeah, so if you feel called to do that, I would appreciate it. Um, so here's something that I wanted to read to you. This is from uh, a post that I did earlier. I wrote, where there is alignment, there is momentum. One of the hardest lessons I've learned is how difficult life can be made when acting, making decisions, and operating according to what you know other people think you should do, okay? Now, what comes to mind immediately there for me is our parents, right? Our grandparents, our um, significant others, our kids, our community, our workplace, like literally every single person has a certain expectation of who you should be in order for them to feel comfortable, okay? And that's healthy in a lot of ways. I mean, obviously, you know, if you have children and they have an expectation of you to nurture them and take care of them and give, the, give to them, that is as it should be, okay? Uh, but what I'm talking about here is like when it comes to your own personal ventures, like your creativity, what kind of work you want to do, uh, what kind of social events you want to go to, um, what kind of vacations you want to take, um, what kind of food choices uh, you want to make. Maybe, um, I mean, it's crazy how society and all these external forces shape shape around us essentially the box that they want us to live in okay um, so I'll continue on operating according to should energy is draining there is little to no space for inspiration there but operating from could energy places you firmly in your own personal power. Could indicates potential. Do you get what I'm saying? So let me talk about what this looks like to kind of clarify what I'm trying to convey here. When you're operating in the should energy, you're going about a program that is subjected to the expectations of only external forces, okay? So let's just say you have um, an opportunity to um, attend, attend an event that you would just absolutely love to attend, you know, that, that would be super exciting for you, but then like, Maybe there are people, you know,
know, either at your work, and that's a big one, uh, or in your family, if they knew that you went, it would be considered scandalous. And so you shrink yourself because if you go and you have fun doing this particular thing and they happen to find out that it's going to be this big issue, okay? I want to help you and me, because I'm still working on this myself, get free from that sort of thing. It's It doesn't, I think it, we're so busy, we don't think about the implications of that kind of a scenario, but the implications of that are this. If you are willing to sacrifice your happiness, your own personal autonomy, your sovereignty, in order to keep other people comfortable in their expectations of you, you are betraying your own soul. You are betraying your own happiness and you're doing it willingly. Now, I don't know about you, but I have reached my limit with that sort of thing and it's probably going to be a huge point of the majority of how I'm going to be a life coach, how I'm doing my life coaching and what I'm wanting to lead people out of. Do you see what I'm saying? That's like a big thing for me. Um, and I feel like it is for other people too, but they just don't have the resources or the support from, from other external sources, right? To give them the permission that they need to just be happy. Do you see, do you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> like it runs deep. If you think about it, it really, really does. And when you think about how short life is and you think about how much pressure and stress, stress and pressure is like at an all time high and it occupies way too much of our years. Hey sister! Oh my gosh, Lori Love in the house. I'm so glad you're here, my love. <laughs> me me and Lori, we have these conversations and we literally just are like, oh my gosh, have you ever thought about this? Did you ever think about it like this? Why do people do this? <laughs> like you guys should really hear some of our conversations sometimes. Like those get deep too. And they are the kind of conversations that will set you free. Am I right, sister? Or am I right? <laughs> So, um, I want you to think about though, I want you to, here's what I want you to think about. When you are transitioning from doing those should things and you go from that to doing what you could do, it's, you know, then you start thinking of it like this. Okay, well, listen, there's not actually someone who's going to stand at the door and keep me from going to this event that others would consider scandalous. Technically, it's fine if I go. I'm just worried about um, the social fallout that could come from that, okay? We're going to move beyond that. I want you to shift into a mindset, and I want you to really think, like, what could happen if I follow my heart? And if I go with my soul, what could happen? What could happen? I'll tell you some possibilities, okay? What could happen is, is you go and you make this decision. You go, this is just a, an example I'm using. And if you all think of other examples or scenarios maybe that you have experienced personally and would like to share here uh, in this thread to help other people, drop that in the comments, either during this live or um, on the replay. But what could happen is, uh, and this is, I'm speaking kind of from a personal experience here, what could happen is, is when you go to this event, you might make a connection with someone who is just like so like-minded, such a kindred spirit, and maybe you form a business together that becomes ultra successful and you just ride off into the sunset wealthy with your newfound friend at this event. You probably shouldn't 
have gone to, right? So think about the possibilities rather than the probabilities. Probably those people in your life who want to keep you in the should box are going to get uncomfortable, right? But what could happen is, is you could meet the love of your life at this event, or you could uh, connect with a powerful business partner at this event. Worst case scenario, you just go and your little heart ends up so happy. And if you hadn't gone, maybe you would have sat on your couch um, binging on bonbons and being depressed for not rising up in your own personal power. Do you see what I'm saying here? Like, this is a big deal. And your happiness is worth it. If nothing else, if you don't make some profound connections, if you don't, you know, have some sort of a life-changing experience, you could still just go and be super happy when maybe you wouldn't have ordinarily been. Uh, you could receive some kind of fulfillment that you wouldn't have ordinarily received had you just sat on the couch, uh, depressed about your lack of power, keeping other people comfortable. Whew! Am I alone in this? I'm not alone in this. This is why I'm doing life coaching, okay? Um, so with that said, if you would like to connect for a life coaching session, let's do that. If you would like to connect to um, do writing workshops with me, either one-on-one -on -one or group, let me know. My whole thing is helping people come into their personal power in such a way that they don't have to go back, that they um, get to experience autonomy, maybe for the first time in their lives, and um, just really step into who you could be, that version of yourself that you want to be. And let's just be honest here. Some of us, some of us get into midlife or later before we allow that to happen. Before we give ourselves the permission that we need when we're like in our 40s and up, okay? And so if there's one thing I could do for people who are younger than I am, and I've done this with my nieces, um, they are almost, two of my nieces are grown women. I've got other little nieces who are coming up and they're not quite yet grown. They think they're grown, <laughs> but not quite yet. But that's one thing that I want to impress on everyone because I feel like that's part of my calling is to lead people into personal autonomy because I'm telling you right now, life I have seen, and I've even seen this in like cultural settings. Y'all know I travel, right? And I'm somewhat familiar-ish acquainted with, um, you know, Eastern Asian cultures. So like um, from Turkey until like over into India and like that side of the world, in other words. Um, when there is a lack of personal autonomy, when there is an absolute outright suppression of personal power, that can make for a really miserable life. And it is, it is not worth that. Now, to balance what I just said, I'm not trying to say that we should become or be in completely individualistic at the cost of all others. That's not at all what I'm saying here, okay? So I'm bringing the balance there. Hey, Manir, thank you. So sweet. Thank you for that kind compliment. Um, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just, there needs to be a balance. There just, there needs to be a balance. We need to have um, a symbiotic relationship, right? We need to be interdependent, right? Um, that's what we need. 
We don't need to be on the extreme to where everyone is important, but no one is important. We don't need to be in the extreme of, I'm the only one that's important, and I could care less, you know, if anybody else is healthy, happy, or wealthy. You know what I mean? Like, you, you see where I'm going with this? Like, there needs to be a balance. And so that's what I'm hoping to bring for people cross-culturally, right? I'm hoping, and I do kind of already do this in, in some ways because I do have um, friends who are in cultures where, you know, they're not allowed. I mean, they can be like in their 40s, like my age, and, and they're not allowed to, you know, do certain things that should just be an, an automatic personal freedom, you know. And so that person ends up in, you know, severe depression and their lives just are in danger of not reaching their full expression. And um, I think that's one of the greatest travesties ever, in my opinion, um, is to never reach that full, authentic expression, whether that is, oh, I'm not necessarily even saying like, on social media or for the world to see, but in our daily lives, how we express who we are, what we're about, what we value, um, you know what I mean? So that way the people around us can see us and accept us as we are rather than looking up at us or looking down at us or giving us a side eye, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe they look at you from that position. I don't know. I know I've had plenty of those myself, myself, myself. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> going to keep moving. Okay. So <laughs> not going to go down that rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, do you see what I'm saying, guys? Do you see what I'm saying? If you do drop in the comments and let us no. Okay? So the could, if you operate in the could, you can kind of see what could happen of you making those choices for yourself by enforcing your own personal boundary, boundaries in order that you might experience freedom that should automatically be inherited to your own humanity. Do you see what I'm saying? I hope y'all are seeing what I'm saying. Um, so, yeah, yeah, so let me read this part. Um, every time you choose to honor what your soul is calling you to do, even if it's just a small decision, you're bringing yourself one step closer to the highest version of yourself and the life you long for. I mean, like, I'm just going to tell you right now, y'all know, some of you, many of you, I don't know, know my sweet little mamma, my little sweet mamma, Gloria Scoggins, and she is one of the most precious humans. She should be like sainted. She's never stopped raising children as of this moment 8 59 p.m eastern standard time on may 25th she is raising children and um i'm just like <laughs> she should she should be sainted honestly um she has been a safe space a safe place she's been a safe space and offered safe place since before I was born. So she just, I just feel like she deserves, she deserves so much recognition for that. So if you know my little mamma and if you are from where she's from in Decatur, Tennessee, give her a big old hug for me and, you know, let her know that you see her, okay? That you see her, her commitment and her dedication um, because so many up in Decatur, are, are, they know Memo. Everyone up there knows Memo. She is literally known as Memo. 
<laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, just hug her neck and, you know, thank her for being who she is. Let her know she's loved, because uh, I feel like often, you know, she would never say this, but she never really gets a lot of thanks for all the sacrifices that she makes so and she deserves she deserves more I think than what most of us could give her so anyway let me go back to my post if you all see the stars button and you are resonating with this live and you feel called to support me with stars I would be so, so grateful. Like I said earlier, I'm a writer, I'm a poet, but I don't know that I could adequately articulate how grateful I am for those of you who have been supporting me with stars. Um, and for those of you who would consider doing that during this particular live or replay whenever you catch it. Um, or if you even want to do like a donation, like I've got Cash App and Venmo too. If you all feel called to do so, of course, no pressure here. Um, so let me go back to where we were at because I feel like I was about to get on to some really good stuff and I don't want to miss it. When you find yourself in this position, you're being presented with an opportunity to be authentic. And authenticity is where it's at, y'all. It just really is. Honest and true to your conscience. True to your conscience or to shrink yourself and please others. Y'all, that is low vibe. And low vibe means... It means this. If you look at organic, fresh produce, the molecules of that produce vibrates much higher than produce that is non-organic. Um, and so... The higher, the high, and, uh, and this just kind of goes for all forms of life, not just like vegetables, but like humans and animals and plants and um, emotions, emotions, and I could go on and on and on about that, but the higher the vibration, the more vibrant that being is, the more life that is accessible for that being to experience, to express to tap into. Hi, Vicki. Oh, I love you, Vicki. I'm so glad you're here. I love you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. Eddie. Hey, Eddie. Hey, Sam. Woo, yay. Thank you for being here. Um, so, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Then I said, and I don't think I need to tell you which one of those choices are best. Okay, I don't think I need to tell you which one of those choices are best. Um, but, yeah. So, anyway, that's just kind of like where my heart's at uh, for you all. I don't want to keep you much longer. Plus, I think my phone's going dead. So, anyway, just let me know kind of where you're at on this. If you've enjoyed this and... Um, if you'd like to connect further and check out my Facebook profile and uh, hopefully you can receive a lot of value from that. Okay, I won't keep you guys much longer even though I could. I love you so much. Um, this is Cosette Dunn with Cosette Contemplates and I will see you in another live video soon. Okay, I love you all so much. Let me know that you caught the replay if you do that. Okay, I love you. I love you. I love you.